why, oh why, do we keep all of this stuff? Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. Oh, I'm not sure exactly why, other than we have an obsession with paper. And we started this because of junk journaling, but the junk journaling umbrella is so encompassing. It's art journaling, and it's making ephemera, and it's making embellishments and pretty pages and using up scraps and getting creative and not letting anything go to waste and it's just this all-encompassing ever-expanding snowball of a craft hobby <laughs> this is part of the series i just started called this inspired me and today's project is inspired by fodder school there are several video hops where participants of fodder school which i believe was started by willa wanders people who have gone to and or taught fodder school did a year-end wrap-up of all the things that they had done throughout the fodder school program years one two and i think there's some even in three and i i've been binge watching them from all kinds of different youtubers couldn't tell you where I saw this particular one that inspired me and I can't even show you what would what it was that inspired me until I get some stuff done but it's also inspired by Christina at Christina's shack she did some fantastic tags using her ransom letters and we'll talk more about that in a little bit this used to be a scrapbook page and I had photos taped to it it's, and it's just ugly. You know, it's just homely paper. It's got some little tiny punched dragonflies. It's torn. I mean, it's a mess. So I'm just going to cover this with my scraps. I'll speed it up because who knows how long this is going to take. I'm using the Avery glue stick today. So here's how this turned out. I have to say, when I started doing this, my idea was, because I loved the front of this so much, it was just a painty paper pull from my ceramic plate, that I thought, I'll make artist trading cards, ATCs, out of this. That was my idea. So I started putting all this, all these scraps on here. Well, most of them were vintage, and the ones that weren't vintage when the glue or the mod podge was still wet i sprayed some of my coffee spray into it and mux mixed it around so that it would be more vintage so that there wouldn't be a whole lot of bright on here well vintage very bright vintage ah uh, and when it was still damp i picked it up to see what it was looking like and i decided 
completely disregarding my original decision and idea. Like, I just didn't even think about it. I thought, oh, this would make a fun cover. And so I bent it around a book to get where I wanted the spine folds to be. And while it was still damp, folded in those spine folds and then put it near one of the heat registers so it would dry like that. And so now I've got this great little cover. It's none too little. It would have to be cut down in order to accommodate a regular folded size piece of paper. So I'd have to cut it down a little bit, which kind of stinks. I like that edge, but oh well. Totally forgetting my original idea was bright ATCs. So what I ended up doing, because I had vintage and decided to make it a cover of some sort, I just sprayed coffee all over it. And again, I keep sometimes instant. I think this is half instant and half stuff that was left in the pot. And I just spray it. The first time I did this, I, I rubbed it around with a cloth. And this time I'm just going to let it let it dry with these spots on it. All of this to say, you don't have to know where a project is going when you start. And even if you do, even if you think, oh, I'm going to make ATCs out of this. I think that'll be great. You can certainly deviate from that plan. It, it doesn't matter if you don't know exactly where it's going. You just want to have fun with paper and glue and scissors and stuff that's fine that is absolutely fine because it doesn't always end up where you plan it's going to anyway i am manipulating some of these dark spots back i didn't want them to fall off the page mucking them about like that kind of gives it a spatter feel rather than just a droplet feel they look kind of spattery and they'll dry faster if they're not sitting there in puddles. So I'm going to set this aside. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'll probably make it some kind of journal cover eventually. Now when I was pulling scraps out of that bag yesterday, which I'll show you the bag, you know, it was pretty full. It was exploding out of the top of the bag. It was pretty full. I pulled a lot out and they were pretty plain white. I wanted to use colored strips on the thing that I was, the other thing that I was gluing. There were several pieces that were still on the table that I just decided to throw them out. Just throw them out. I still have a bag of scraps to use, but in the name of getting more room in my room, I'm going to contain it to this bag. It's not going to be exploding out. I'm going to keep using from this bag and hopefully this bag will go away. I pulled a whole bunch of these white ones out because I wanted to bring your attention to what, what can you do with these. Well, I just did a video on making faux washi tape out of these white strips. Very fun, very easy. There's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, I will link that video at the end so you can watch that one next. Super easy. These don't go to waste either, but I just made a huge batch. I don't know that I need these, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to let these go. <laughs> and it's okay. <sighs> Some stuff is gone. This is my alphabets collection, my ransom letters collection. And typically what I do is when I'm going through magazines, once I harvest all the pictures and whatnot, I go back through... And I look for interesting fonts, colors, cool backgrounds, different colored fonts, different colored backgrounds. And you'll notice these are fairly large. Usually they're pretty small, more like this size for inside journals or ATCs or smaller projects. But for this project that I'm working on today, I knew that I wanted and needed bigger letters to do what I wanted to do. And so these are fairly large. And what I do is I cut I cut out 
the words and then I stick them in this envelope. I used to stick them in a bag near this box, but I wanted something more self-contained. So I stick them and if it's too big, I just cut them in half so that they fit in this envelope. And I made this little pocket out of a torn piece of fabric. I mean, it's torn, it's just nothing. And packaging tape so that everything is here. Everything I need is here. So if I need to click like, just gra grab this and tuck in some more words, I can do that and then put it away and it's no fuss, no moss. On the nights that I'm watching movies with my parents or hanging out with friends or just chilling for the night, rare occasion around here, but sometimes you just need to. I take this whole box and my little fussy cutting scissors out to the living room and I sit on the couch open this up on my lap oh I, I got this this is a jewelry making container for bead organization I got it in the craft beading section at Walmart maybe five dollars so you need at least 26 holes but I got one that's a little bit bigger so I have 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 holes in here so I have a to Z, maybe some numbers, I don't know. I have a whole collection of ampersands. I love the ampersand, so I have a whole collection of those. Small words, just little interesting things, cool textures, uh, punctuation, question marks, exclamation points, ellipses, what are these? And numbers, and little words, of, an, and, the, but, of, and apostrophe S's because those come in handy sometimes as well. Now you can make these. I've seen people make these and, and decoupage them. And you know, they're so cute. They're a little bit bigger. but so cute. You just got to pick, pick your projects because there is not time enough to do them all. I didn't want to spend time making a box. I have made boxes and it takes a lot of time. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. So I spent the $5 and got that. I take this all out. Put it on my lap and there's this little lip here so I pull something out of here I let those rest on the lip and I just cut them into their proper holes and it's just a nice mindless thing to keep your hands busy while you're chilling because some of us can't just sit and watch a movie. Can't just sit on the couch. Have to be doing something. And then, you know, you use these two. I also started cutting out when the letters were so close together. I started cutting out words. I love these because they're shiny. And I think they'd be fun. So you put these on ATCs or you use them on journal covers and, and, and name plates for journals. There's all kinds of uses for the ransom letters, including what we're doing today. This is almost dried and it's gone from nice bright white to grungy, vintagey. You know, now it doesn't look like two separate, complete separate projects. What I'll probably do with this in order to tie the two together, because I have vintaged this up with coffee, I'm going to take the blue, the purple, the teal. Now this was teal and purple, I think were the only two colors that I used. And I'm going to do a grunge these up. Put some of those color let's just do it let's just do it shall we these are the two colors that i used i'm also going to throw in a little bit of this coppery color it's a metallic this is a baby wipe that i left out overnight bone dry so what i think i'm going to do is spray it a little bit with water i don't need it wet wet but just damp a little bit and i'm gonna like any of my projects, it's going to be really cool or it's going to sort of suck. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But I know that this does not match this yet at all. Not even close. So I want I want to matchy-matchy it up a little bit. Have it look like it coordinates. Again, I'm adding a little bit more water to my wipe. And that got this a little bit wet, which will help 
get these colors on here and I'm just gonna get some color on here you know and if this doesn't work it's gonna it'll be fine but if it didn't work I could always glue scraps all over this side and then they'd match completely same baby wipe different color a little bit more water I love these tubes they're so much easier than working with these I think unless the color is nice and liquid but I just like these a lot that bright white makes me crazy in there so I'm gonna take this down this purple is very purple which is awesome And then a little bit of this coppery. I think it's called rose gold, but I really don't like rose gold at all. So I call it copper so that I can live with it. Mind games, you know, a lot of mind games going on here. And I don't think there's any of this here. So let's put some of this on this side and hopefully this will tie it all in together. What I'm doing is hitting the spots that are kind of overpowering like that giant chunk of purple or this giant chunk of white and just knocking that back a little bit now if i use this as a cover here we go again and i open it up they kind of go together now a little bit those three colors tied everything together is it perfect? Is it there yet? I don't think so. It's got a little ways to go. But that's the fun of it. Manipulating it into something that's worth having. So I'm going to let that dry before I play any more with it. I love these. It's like tie-dye. Isn't that cool? I use these in collage. Kind of like tissue. Although it's pretty thick. I have to try it. See what it's going to do. But I really like how that always comes out. Okay, so what I did this project for was inspired completely by Christina at Christina's Shack. She decided to use her ransom letters and make these fabulous tags. So you'll notice this is a little bit different than, than what it looked like when we left. I didn't like it the way that it was. Wow, did that get jacked up. It was too magazine-ish for me, so I took white gesso just like I did with the paint just now I took a white gesso and just kind of knocked that back a little bit I didn't cover it completely I wanted that grungy that grungy look and it was pretty cool I liked it but it was still pretty bright I want the words to stand out more than anything the letters so then I took some black and went over parts of it to see which I liked better I think with the words that have so many dark letters I think the white more white background would probably be better you can move them all over to see what's gonna work better so we see oh hello let's try to duh do that a lot we can try it out here on the lighter kind of background those are pretty colored though here down here is some neutral colors with the white background or bring it up here with the black and see if you like the darker background can certainly also go this way with them for a completely different look once you figure that out we'll glue it down and cut them out so you see that the bigger letters have come in very handy because again a lot of my letters are pretty tiny right and these tags what what these are going to be need something a little bit bolder and sometimes that means bigger i really like the believe i didn't certainly didn't plan this but the colors in the letters are about the same as the colors behind the letters i really like that that appeals to my matchy matchy coordinating mind this isn't too bad again similar colors underneath for some reason the a is bothering me i think it's too big so i'm just gonna snip off just a tiny bit of the top and just a tiny bit 
of the bottom even though like the, the e is huge but it has to be i think there's too much on the side of that r so i'm going to trim that up a little bit and you can't know that when you're trimming the letters until you decide how you're going to use them so let's try this wag more i put these up here because of that tape because of that border they were kind of the same colors but since we're auditioning things let's see how it all works down here and because this hot pink is up in here I thought maybe maybe I don't like the pinks with this red strip sometimes you just have to see it without all the extra junk that's not bad and just because we're auditioning, let's just see what it looks like. That works all right, too. So I'm going to go glue these down, and then I'll show you what I end up with. So you can, of course, make more words. I just, just grab these few. I need to cut up more bigger letters because I've pretty much used up my big letters for these four words. But I'll bring you that, the end product here, in just a minute. So here's where we landed. The original idea was to cut them down, poke a hole, make a bookmark or a tag or something like that. But when I cut them just to this size. I quite like that. I think that would make an interesting altered book page. For this particular one, it'd have to be trimmed down just a little bit more because it's a teeny bit big. Trim it down just a hair. I think that would be fun just the way that it is. Or as a tuck-in, a journal card. So I didn't cut them down as small as I thought I would. Same with this one. I, I quite like how it turned out, and that would make a nice page in an altered book or a junk journal. It could be a tip-in. Again, a journal card. Make it a giant belly band. Glue it at the top and the bottom and make a pocket. Could leave it out. Probably not quite that far, uh, but it, it would make an interesting page edging if it hung out a little bit. So I'd have to trim off this inside part to get it closer in so that E would be covered, but just that really colorful edge would be visible. I like that. And this one's a little bit different. It's, it's a long, tall Sally type thing. So again, it could be tucked into something, could fold it over and make a little notepad with scraps. Just staple them in and, and make a little notepad for your junk journals or altered books. This would also serve as a nice bookmark in an altered book or a junk journal with, especially if you make that little jot notebook. So I'm really happy with how they turned out. It was labor intensive gluing all the strips down, but I did make use of some scraps and it's a different look. It's not something I have in my paper stash. It's not something that looks like everything else I've ever done. And that that's important to me. On one hand, I really want to have, quote, a style. But on the other hand, I see some channels and some Instagram accounts where literally you can't tell They've gone for that Instagram aesthetic. So when you see all of their, I don't know, 12 or 15 pictures all at once, they aesthetic, they're they aesthetically pleasing, which is beautiful. But you can't tell one day's work from the other. I see so many YouTubers as well. Everything is the same. They have a, a distinct style, which is awesome. But they never deviate from it. Nothing ever looks different than what they did last time, than what they did last time, than what they did the time before that, and the time before that, and the time before that. Even if it's a, you know, maybe it's a, a junk journal this time, and an altered book next time, and a zine the next time, it all looks the same. So, uh, as always, half of me wants to have a style like that, a very distinct style. But the other half of me says, ugh, it's cookie cutter, cookie cutter, cookie cutter. It's like working on a factory line, twisting the same nut, 
twisting the same knot, twisting the same knot for 40 years. Can you imagine? My head would explode at the end of one day. So I'm torn. That's why I like this. It's very different. Will I do it again? Yeah, it's really dark. You know, it's very, they're pretty dark, but we know I like the dark stuff. So it is right up my alley, but because I don't have anything else like it, I'm going to have to make something to go along with it or, you know, because matchy matchy, my brain does need things, you know, I can't just put this in a vintage book or my dog book. Well, this one might go in my dog book, Wagmore. Wagmore Studios is my overall business name where I have all my stuff. It's called Wagmore Studios KLM and it is where I have my YouTube stuff, my Patreon stuff, my Take at the Lake stuff, Positively Creative You stuff. The crime is common, logic is rare. My tri true crime channel, which is, again, on the back burner for just a little while. I have some things here that I'd like to do first, but that's where Wagmore comes from. And I have a sign in my kitchen that says, Wagmore, bark less. Uh, that used to be my name, Wagmore, bark less press. Well, the positively creative you person inside me says, just leave it at Wagmore. In other words, Wagmore. Wag your tail, be happy more, versus bark less. Bitch less. Right? Wag more, bark less. A whole big part of my PCU stuff is a focus on only forward, only on what you want, and only on the positive. Where if we say, wag more, that's two steps in the right direction, positive, bark less, it's two steps in the, backwards into the negative. And so we've made no progress. We're back at square one, at, at ground zero. So, wag more, wag more, wag more, wag more. You're moving further, closer toward what you want versus one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back. I really, really love this restaurant. One step forward in the positive direction. But the wait staff sure is slow. Why bother? Now you're right back where you started from and no progress toward what you want, toward your future. The only way to predict the future is to create it. And so I changed my own business name because it's slippery. You can miss it. Wagmar Barkless sounds very positive. To so explore it a little bit further in the Barkless, although dogs don't bark to bitch, but that's to me what the sign means. Wag your tail more, have fun more, enjoy more, compliment more, notice the good more, and bark less. Quit bitching. Quit bitching. Nobody wants to hear it. And it doesn't do you any good other than to vent. And what that does is keep you mired in whatever you're bitching about. I say this as the crabby crafter. We all know I'm half and half. So it's kind of like being multiple personalities. <laughs> Try living here. Anyway, Wagmore, that's what that is. I love it. So I could put that in my dog book. I could put that in my dog book too. This one, I may just hit it with some more white paint because it's just a wee bit super dark. I don't know. But that's where we landed. Anyway, I wanted to show you the finished product and get this video out to you so I can move on to some more. P.S. If you're wondering what this book is, I have a hour long or more, it may be longer than an hour, free workshop on my Patreon page called Junk Journal Jargon so that you understand the difference between an ATC and an ICAD and what a, what is a belly band and what is a tuck spot versus a corner tuck and what is a flip out and a tip in. You know, we, we tend to speak a different language and if you're brand new to junk journaling, it can be pretty frustrating to stop what you're watching, go ask Dr. Google or find another video that explains what the hell an ATC is and come back to your video, blah, blah, blah. So there's a mini workshop free for on my Patreon page, just free, 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 that has a printable download of everything alphabetized. So if you're watching a video and someone throws out a, a term you don't know, you can have that right with you and just quick like look it up alphabetically, super easy and fast. And this is my explanation. Like this explains um, faux sewing and what is a belly band. It's this thing here. And it just goes through and explains every single thing that I could think of at the time. My fun sprays leaked. I had them in the wrong bottles. There's a short on that. Check it out. Made a 
heck of a mess. I'm going to have to cover it. Anyway, that's what this beautiful book is. It was supposed to be an altered book just for my play, and it ended up being the sample book for that. I suppose now that that video is done, I can go back to playing in this and making it something. I did start journaling in it just to journal in it. So I may go back to doing that. Anyway, that's what this is, just in case you're wondering. In the meantime, you have a lovely, lovely crafty day. Go love up your beastlies. Today is extra belly rub day. Mm -hmm. Scratch them behind the ears in their favorite place. Little Miss Bitsy likes her right on the front of her chest. Oh, she just loves that. So we do that a lot. Because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. I'm going to take out the lake. Out for now.